Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is the first episode that I'm making of the series where I review different note-taking apps for Android on the Tablet 6. If this is something that you want to see and you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn your post notifications on. I'm going to be trying to have a regular upload schedule of posting every Friday. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with the next note-taking app that you want to see on this series. In this specific video, we're going to be making an in-depth review of Microsoft OneNote. And right now on the screen, you're going to be seeing timestamps in case there's one part that interests you the most. Okay, so first of all, I started using OneNote last year for taking digital notes of my classes because I wanted to start shifting to having everything digitally and avoiding paper whenever I could. And so I have a friend that he has the XPS 13, you know, the one with the touchscreen, and he uses a pen and OneNote for taking notes on all his classes. And when I told him that I wanted to start taking digital notes, he said that OneNote was really good and that I should give it a try. But at that time, that was probably beginning of fall, I didn't have the Tablet 6, so I used my computer, but my computer doesn't have a touchscreen, so I basically used OneNote for a whole semester just by typing, and I sometimes opened the app on my phone and I drew some figures for reference. And even from just a typed experience, I fell in love with the app, and it's because it gives you a lot of freedom for organization and has many useful tools that you can take advantage of while taking your notes. The way your notes are organized is that you can create multiple notebooks and each notebook has sections that can be grouped. And inside of each section, there are pages and that's where your notes are stored. And of course, each page can also be grouped with other pages. Now, the page you're working on, it's an infinite canvas where you can write wherever you may want and it has some customization. You can change the color of the page and the rule lines that are on the background, which you can set to normal rule lines or grid lines if you prefer, each one with four different sizes. While typing, you get the standard tools to change, for example, the font. By default, it comes with many different fonts, but you can also use the ones that you've previously downloaded. You can also change the size of the text, the color, Highlight it, choose different types of bullet points, numbering, alignment of your paragraph, and a cool thing that it has is that you can put tags on your notes. For example, if you're going through your notes and you see that there's a topic that you're not comfortable with, you can assign it a to-do tag so you know that you gotta study it later and you can check it once you've completely understand it. Or if there's something that you want to clarify with your professors, you can put a question tag so when you check your notes on a future lecture, you can clear any doubts you may have. And in case you're not satisfied with the text that OneNote offers, you can also create your own by selecting one of the many icons that there are and giving it the name that you want. When we move to the next set of tools, we're given the opportunity to insert tables, files, you know, images, PDFs. I think you can also put videos then we have printouts, and that's basically printing the content of a PDF because you can insert it as an attachment, maybe just for reference, but you're also given the choice to print its content. You can also insert pictures, any online video, links, audios, and audios are really useful when taking notes during, for example, a lecture, because when you're listening to it, OneNote highlights the specific line of text you were typing at the time, so if you wrote something ambiguous that doesn't make a lot of sense, you can probably understand it with this feature. And last but not least, we have math, <laughs> and I also really like this. You can type a certain formula or equation, and with this, you have many different options on what to do with that line. So for example, if you put x squared minus four, you get all of these options, and it even gives you the option to see the step-by-step -step solution and create a practice test based on similar problems. And it gets better because you can also use it with drawn equations. So for example, if we want to analyze x squared minus 16, we get these options, and you can also see the graph and include it on your notes. So yeah, I consider it a really powerful tool. And now that we're on the drawing tools, I just quickly want you to see that there are three types that we can use. We can use pen, pencil, and highlighter. And each of them has pre-selected colors that you can use, or you can choose even more by clicking more colors. You can also enable assistance 
to draw shapes and you can also turn your ink input to text with this other tool. The eraser deletes the entire line of input. It is not just the portion you're selecting, but the entire line that comes with it. I like a lot the selection tool because it is pretty accurate. It goes exactly from where you want it to, so you have a better selection of your text. Finally, we have the view tab. And in here, I think that the most useful tools, or at least the ones I use the most, are page color because I like to try different backgrounds from time to time, rule lines, and in here there are two types that you can choose from, each one with four variants as I mentioned before. You can also create new windows so that you can be seeing two or more different nodes at the same time. And finally, another useful tool that it has is replay, with which you can select a specific area on screen that you want to see how it was created. So, as you can see, it is a very complete note-taking app. I really enjoy using it last semester, and I was really excited to use it to its full by getting the Tab 6. However, I was really disappointed when I was finally able to use it. I am going to try to follow the same review structure that I use for desktop version, and the first thing that I mentioned that I liked was the freedom that you have with the organization of your notes. And that was the first thing that I noticed that wasn't the same. In here, you can only create the basics, notebooks, sections, and pages. There's no way that you can group your sections or create subpages. But hey, it isn't that bad. You can still create them on your tablet and then group them and whatnot on your laptop. Okay, that's a good solution. So let's move on. Once you get to the page you're going to be taking notes on, if you're typing, and by the way, this is a keyboard that I bought for the Tablet 6. It's not specifically designed for it, but it works really good. I'm going to be leaving some links in the description of some keyboards that I consider really good for the tablet. And in case you're also wondering about the case I'm using, I'm going to leave a link to the video where I review it, so you can also check that out. So yeah, if you're taking your notes by typing them in, you get the same features that you'd get on the desktop version. A lot less available fonts, but you still get all of the other customization tools that you could expect to find. And in case you were looking for the tags, you got to move to the insert tab and you can find them there. And in this version, there are a lot more tags that you can use. However, you cannot create your own. You can still add pictures, audios, and any other attachments from your device. And you can also add links to any website in the same way that you would in the desktop version. Now, here's a crucial set of tools because this was what really excited me before having the Tab 6. And as you may remember, the desktop version has a lot of different customization to the drawing set of tools. But once you enter the one on the Tab 6, it is really underwhelming. From the three different types of writing methods you have on your computer, you're only getting two of them in here. The pen and the highlighter. And wait, because it gets better. If you like the galaxy and rainbow colors, or if you like to change the different tonalities of your favorite colors, you're going to start getting used to using the same 16 colors for your notes. And wait, because if you like to use different highlighters to mark your notes, you are going to have to settle with the colors that are available. Yellow and light blue. And nope, you cannot change them. Not the color, not the size of it. And if you've been paying attention, you're going to notice that there are three features missing in this set of tools. First of all, I hope that you can draw figures really good because you're not getting any assistance in here to get them right. And even worse, you're not getting the chance to transform the notes you take with the S Pen to text, which is, again, very unfortunate. But if that wasn't enough, you're also not getting any assistance with your math equations in here. So forget about graphing your math problems if you wanted to understand them a little better. And after seeing all of this, I still had some hope, but I completely lost it when I saw that I had to choose my background from the 16 colors that OneNote decided to include and that I had to stick to only one type of rule line and grid line. Okay, <laughs> all jokes aside, almost all of these minor problems that I've mentioned can be solved if you're using OneNote in both your Tablet 6 and your computer so that you can use your computer for the missing features on the tablet. However, I don't think that's how it should be. 
I know that the OneNote that iPads get, it's basically the same as the desktop version. And I also know that that's because Apple forces developers to publish their products specifically for the device they want to target. Whereas with Android, the app itself is the one that has to adapt to the device it's being used on. And there are a lot of Android devices. But still, I think that there's plenty of room for improvement. And there has been a lot of people complaining about this along the years. And to be honest, I've seen some improvements from OneNote this year. A couple of months ago, it was more limited. So let's hope that they continue with the regular updates on this incredible app, which despite of the missing features it has, it still gives you pretty good functionalities. One of the most important is that all of your notes are backed up on the cloud. You have compatibility across all of the different types of devices out there and your notes are always synced. So any change you make on one device can be instantly viewed on other devices. In regard to the note taking, I think that OneNote probably has the best interpretation of the handwriting input. Although I've heard that some people complain that your text gets changed while you're writing and I've seen it and honestly, I don't mind it. As I said on the desktop version, the selection tool is really good. I've seen others that are simpler and not as effective, so I'm really satisfied with the performance of this one. If you're using the Tab 6, the eraser is mapped to the button of the S Pen. It would be nice being able to choose what to map there, but that's just my personal preference. There's an option to instantly access the draw tools once the pen is close to the screen. That's really useful because you don't have to constantly be looking for the pen to write. You can now modify the color or size of the text on your notes which is something that you can do on the desktop version and I'm impressed honestly that you cannot do it in here. In the Android version, you can only move your text around and change its size. And in case you were wondering, you do get pressure sensitivity with the pen. It's pretty subtle and accurate. I like it a lot. Right now, you're going to be seeing a small clip of me brainstorming for a final project that I have for these upcoming weeks. As a final thought, I like OneNote and I consider it that it has many really good features that they can include. And if they do, OneNote can probably be one of the top two, top three note-taking apps for Android. However, if we're talking about completely free note-taking apps, there's no competition in my opinion with OneNote. However, there are some out there that offer many useful features and are better. Again, in my opinion, but you do have to pay either to get the app or to upgrade to a premium version. If you're interested in these types of videos, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and turn your post notifications on so that you can see the next episode next Friday. I'm also planning to do a review for the Tablet 6. I think that it is a good time because one UI, it is almost out and I'm really hyped about it. I've been waiting for this update for a long time, so stay tuned for that video too. And leave a comment with the next note-taking app that you want me to review for future episodes. And I'm also curious to see if you like this type of videos better, sort of longer videos with slower pace. So yeah, make sure to leave a comment with that. This has been a regular teenager. See you next time. Take care. Peace.